بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Continuing towards the end of the chapter of Zakah from the book Amdatul Fiqh of Imam Ibn Qudam al-Maqdasi رحمه الله تعالى We have today with us باب من لا يجوز دفع الزكاة إليه The chapter wherein the Imam is going to speak about who the zakah cannot be given to because you remember previously, in the previous chapter, he spoke about where and how the zakah should be distributed. So now he's going to mention a few points pertaining to who it cannot be given to. So the Imam, may Allah have mercy upon him, he says, لا تحل صدقا لغني ولا لقوي مكتسب ولا لقوي مكتسب He said, the Imam, that the zakah cannot be given to the one who is rich, nor to the one who is strong and able to earn money. So this is a stark warning to those people who are lazy and they live off the handouts of other people and the benefits of other people. They have no barakah in their lives and this is displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rather, one should strive if he has the ability to find work and to find trade, to find ways to bring money into his livelihood. And that will be achieved by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So how can a person be determined as being rich? How will we know that the person is rich? <clears throat> he has more money than the nisab. What else do we have to add to that? <clears throat> Maybe somebody has, for example, a million pounds. It could be the person has a million riyals, but it doesn't suffice that person's expenditure, right? They may be in a situation where they have debts. They may be in a situation where their expenditure is beyond what they have, though their money is way above the nisab. Okay? So you have to look at the whole picture. It's not just the fact that the person has money above the nisab. It's the person has money beyond the needs that he has. Okay? That's what makes a person rich. So a person can become rich either by inheriting money or by earning a living uh, from money, from trading or from being employed to earn some money, okay? The Imam, he says, وَلَا تَحِلْ لِآلْ مُحَمَّدْ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ وَهُمْ بَنُ حَاشِمْ وَمُوَالِيهِمْ The Imam, he said, the zakah is not permissible for the family of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, Al Bayt, and they are Al Hashim. The Imam, he says, they are the tribes of Al Hashim, and they're freed slaves, وَمُوَالِيهِمْ So, here, the majority of the ulama, they say that zakah cannot be given to the family of the Prophet ﷺ. Okay? If they are from the tribes of Hashim. And that includes Al-Ali, Al-Abbas, Al-Aqil, Al-Harith, Al-Abi Lahab, all these uh, subsections of these tribes. Uh, Al-Hashim, the Hashimis. They are not to receive from the zakah. This is the majority opinion, okay? Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah ta'ala, he says they can receive from the zakah if they, don't, if they do not receive <clears throat> from the khumus. What is the khumus? We mentioned before that that which is taken from booty is divided into five parts. Okay? And one-fifth of that, those five parts are divided into another five parts. From those further division of five parts, it's given to the family of the Prophet ﷺ. Now, if this not, is not available, like it's not available in our time, there's no war booty, which is distributed amongst the family of the Prophet ﷺ, and then these people are poor, the family of the Prophet ﷺ, they, according to Ibn Taymiyyah, Shaykh Uthaymin, Rahimullah Ta'ala, and others, minority opinion, are to be given zakah. But they stipulate that where does this zakah come from? It comes from the other rich members of the Hashimi tribes, of the Hashimi families. So it's not outside of Al Muhammad. It's within Al-Muhammad, the rich give to the poor within the Al-Muhammad, okay, of zakah. This is a point that the ulama, they mentioned pertaining to this. The Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith, إِنَّ صَدَقَ لَا تَحَلَّنَا وَإِنَّ مُوَالِيَ الْقَوْمِ مِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ That sadaqa, meaning zakah, obligatory zakah, is not permissible for us, and the freed slaves of a tribe or of a people are from them, Okay. So the Banu Hashim, they are not to receive sadaqah, nor are they freed slaves to receive zakah. Okay, except in the opinion that we mentioned of Ibn Taymiyyah, Uthaymin rahimahullah ta'ala and others. وَلَا يُجُوز دَفْؤُهَا إِلَى الْوَالِدَيْنِ وَإِنْ عَلُوا وَإِنْ عَلَوْا And it's not permissible for you to give your zakah 
to your parents, even if they go up in relationship. Going up in relationship means the grandparents and the great-grandparents and so on, okay? Going up. If your parents are not allowed to receive your zakah, nor your grandparents, nor your great-grandparents. Why? Because it's your responsibility to make infaq upon them, to pay for their needs. So now, if you were to give them zakah, it's removing your responsibility. So you're benefiting yourself because now you're not having to pay from your wealth to cover their needs if you pay zakah to them, okay? Now again, Ibn Taymiyyah, he has an opinion. He says that if it be the case that the person who's supposed to take care of his parents is very poor, but he has nisab, he has enough to pay zakah, but he doesn't have enough to pay for the keep of his parents after he pays zakah. So he's in a situation, right? He has enough to pay zakah, but not enough to pay for the keep for the well-being of his parents. So what does he do? In this situation, he can give zakah to his parents according to this opinion. But our imam and the majority, they say no. Okay? They say, sadaqah is not to be given from the son to his parents. Okay? But of course, they can receive zakah from other people outside of uh, the family. وَلَا إِلَى الْوَلَدْ وَإِن سَفَلْ And nor can you give zakah to your sons or daughters or your grandsons or granddaughters, or your great-grandsons or great-granddaughters, okay? So anybody who's related to you in that manner, you cannot give zakah for the same reasoning. You are supposed to be spending upon them, and you cannot give them zakah because then that will take away from your spending upon them, and the benefit will return to you. وَلَا إِلَى زَوْجَةً Nor can you give zakah to your wife, even if she's pretty, even if she cooks you nice biryani, even if she's taking care of you so well, you cannot give zakah to her, right? Why? Because again, your spending upon her is incumbent. So that which is incumbent upon you, you should do. And the zakah will mean that you are removing uh, that which is an obligation upon you if you give her from the zakah. However, Sheikh Khalid al mushaykh in his explanation of Umdat al-Fiqh, he says there are some exceptions to this. He said, if the wife has much from debts, and she's poor, she's unable to pay off her debts, she doesn't have enough money to pay off her debts, then you can give zakah to her in order for her to pay off her debts. Okay? Also, if she has children from another marriage that are with her, okay, and she's unable to provide for them, you can give zakah to her for that purpose, that she can provide for the children from the other marriage because she is too poor to do so. Okay, this was mentioned by Sheikh Khalid al mushaykh as being some exceptions to the rule that I mentioned that the woman is not to receive, the, the wife is not to receive your zakah. Tayyib. What about the situation of the wife being rich and the man being poor? Okay, can the wife give zakah to the man? There's some of the Shafi scholars and the Hanbali scholars that allow that. Okay, that the wife can give zakah to the poor because Abdullah ibn Masudin radiallahu anhu and the hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim that the wife of Abdullah ibn Masood, she wanted to give her zakah. And he insisted that the zakah be given to him and his children. So she went to the Prophet Sallallahu and told him about this. And the Prophet Sallallahu said, yes, uh, he is correct in that. Why? Because he was poor, he didn't have any wealth for himself or for his children, and the wife had wealth. So she was able, according to this opinion, to give zakah to him, okay? So the man cannot give, uh, the man, the husband cannot give zakah to his wife, but the wife, if the husband is poor, can give zakah to the husband, right? So the wife is the responsibility to the husband. Due to that, we cannot give zakah to the wife. Rather, we have to spend upon her from our other wealth. But the woman, the wife, can give zakah to the husband if he is poor. وَلَا مَنْ تَلْزَمُهُ مُؤْنَتُهُ And you are not allowed to give zakah to anybody else who is under your care, from amongst your relatives or anybody else. So say, for example, you have a poor brother, a poor sister, or any other close relative to you, okay? Then you cannot give zakah to them because you are supposed to be spending on them due to quraba, due to the uh, relationship uh, of being relatives to you, your brother, your sister, etc., okay? So zakah is not to be given to them. Wala ila raqiq. And nor can you give zakah that Imam mentions to a slave. Why can't you give zakah to the slave? Ahsant, because he doesn't own his wealth, right? The wealth belongs to his master. So it's not for him to have the wealth. Unless he's agreed like he's mukatib. If he's mukatib, 
then you can give him wealth. To f- Mukatib, we said, means that the person has agreed with his master that I'm going to pay you so much money to remove myself from slavery and to be free. So in this situation, you can give to the slave to have him freed from his master. In other situations, you would go to the master and you would say, how much do you want for me to free your slave? But you don't give it to the slave because the wealth of the slave belongs to the master. Wala ila kafir And nor can you give it to the one who is a disbeliever to a kafir, except yeah, mu'allafatul qulubihim. Okay? Those whose hearts we want to reconcile, those whose hearts we want to bring close to us. And they were of two. Who were they? So somebody who is, is harming the Muslims, okay? You, and he's like a leader of a state or the leader of a powerful tribe. You can pay zakah to him in terms of a gift in order to appease him to keep his harm away from the Muslims. And the second person is somebody who's showing some um, leaning towards accepting Islam or interest in Islam. You give zakah to that person, even though he's a non-Muslim, in hope that he will come closer to accepting Islam. طيب. As for supererogatory charity, meaning charity other than zakah, not obligatory charity, so you can give zakah, you can give the charity to these groups that have just been mentioned that we cannot give to zakah. You can give charity to them as well as to other people or other causes that you see fit to give charity to. You cannot give zakah except with niyyah. Why? It's an act of worship. It's an act of worship. Therefore, if I give zakah on behalf of a person, my brother, for example, I know his zakah is going to be X, Y, and Z amount of money. So let's say, for example, he's away on holiday, and I know where his money is, so I go and take the zakah due from his wealth, and I distribute it, right? This doesn't suffice because he did not have the intention. He didn't tell me to do so. If he tells me to do so, then I can do it that way. But without his intention, without his knowing, I cannot do it. Okay? So it's not permissible like that. Now the Imam is going to mention an exception. Unless the Imam of the Muslims takes it from this person forcibly. So a person is known to refuse to give his zakah. So this person, if he lives in a, uh, in a state ruled by the Islamic Sharia, then the ruler of that state will take his money forcibly, okay, the zakah amount, and pay it because this money belongs to who? Belongs to the poor. It's the right of the poor. It's the right of those who need it. So zakah has to be given no matter what. Okay, if the person is refusing, he is forced to give the zakah. إِلَّا أَنْ يَأْخُذَهَا الْإِمَامِ مِنْهُ قَهْرًا وَإِذَا دَفَعَ زَكَاءَ إِلَىٰ غَيْرِ مُسْتَحَقِّهَا لَمْ تُجْزِئْ أو لَمْ تَجْزِئْ If the person gives zakah to somebody who doesn't deserve it, is not from the categories deserving of the zakah, so he gives the zakah to them by mistake, his zakah is not valid. He has to again give the zakah. Okay? Unless he made a genuine mistake. Okay? Unless he made a genuine mistake. Like he tried his best to figure out if the person was deserving. But then after all of that effort, it was found that the person wasn't deserving. In this situation, it's hoped that it's overlooked and his zakah is valid. But the thing that it's warning us from is that when you pay your zakah, you have to ensure to the best of your ability that it's going to the people who deserve it. <laughs> Except for a rich person, okay, if you thought he was poor. Because sometimes it's hard to distinguish between the poor and the rich because you have some rich people who are very humble in the way they live their lives, right? Though he's rich, meaning he has above the nisab and he has enough for his needs for a year, but he dresses very uh, humbly, so you think he's poor, you give it to this person, this is overlooked, okay? And I've seen this happen many a time. Like I've been in a masjid, a friend of mine, after salah, he's making dua, somebody will come by and put money in his hand, thinking that he's poor, but he's well-to-do, but it's just because he's dressed quite humbly, right? And may Allah give good to those who put money in his hands and, and likewise. طيب, that's, uh, we, with that, we come to the end of the chapter. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us understanding and to make us from those who implement what we learn and spread what we learn and to make it heavy in our scale of good deeds. And now I would like to do the test with you. First question, question number one. A non-Muslim has a hundred grams of gold 
and a year has passed upon the gold. He has 100 grams of gold above the nisab. A year has passed, how much zakah does he have to pay? He's not Muslim, therefore zakah is not obligatory upon him. A person has a debt equal to nisab. Does he have to pay zakah on it? Yes or no? Why? So the Imam, he says, he clearly said in the text, if you have a debt, يستغرق النصاب, which uh, depletes the nisab completely, or ينقصه, or brings it down, then this person's zakah is not upon this person, okay? طيب, next question to Fahad. A Muslim has a thousand qatr riyals. He has a thousand riyals, right? And a debt is owed to him of nine thousand riyals. How much zakah does he have to pay? And why? He has in his possession a thousand riyals and he's owed nine thousand riyals. If he's guaranteed to get it back, then he pays zakah. Very good. Ahsan, that's the simple and correct answer. If he's guaranteed to get it back, then he pays the zakah on that amount. A Muslim, Muhammad, a Muslim at the beginning of the year has a thousand riyals that he trades with. Okay? He has a thousand riyals that he trades with. In the 11th month, in the 11th month of the year, the amount in his possession goes up to 8,500. Does he have to pay zakah knowing that the hawl wasn't complete on this extra money? So in the year, for 10 months, he had 1,000 riyals. In the 11th month, went up to 8,500 riyals. Does he have to pay zakah on the whole amount or just the 1,000 if that's above the nisab? This comes under urud at tijara the trade goods. The trade goods is connected to the asal of its money. Okay, so the ribh, the profit from the trade goods is connected to the capital investment. So whenever the, hawl, whenever the capital investment started, that's when the hole starts. Okay, the capital investment is when the hole starts. So no matter what profit came from it or when it came, even a day before uh, the completion of the year, you don't look at the new amount of money. You look at the fact that you had the capital investment with the intention of trade from, from a year. Okay, so the end amount, the net amount of money, zakah is paid upon. So, yeah, so he pays. He pays on the whole amount. Yeah, even though that whole amount was not with him except for two months. So he only had the 1,000 riyals for 10 months. The, the above, the 7,500 was only with him for two months. But it's connected to the whole of the initial investment. طيب, a Muslim has 500 grams of silver, 500 grams of silver and 80 grams of gold. Okay, does he have to pay zakah? And why? Okay, so we said, what is the uh, nisab of uh, silver? 595. And the zikah, the nisab of gold? 85. So neither of them here are complete. Okay? But does he have to pay zakah on these amounts that he has? He has 500 grams of silver and he has 80 grams of gold. Both of them are below the nisab. But what does he do? We said that he puts them together, right? Because if he puts them together, it would be above the value of either the nisab of the silver or either the nisab of the gold. Okay, it will be above the value of the nisab, whichever one you go by, and therefore he has to pay zakah on that. طيب, a Muslim has a car worth 9,000 riyals that he uses, taking his kids to school. How much zakah does he have to pay on it? It's a personal item, ahsant. He doesn't have to pay zakah on it. A Muslim has 50 cows for breeding and milking, and they are fed by machines. How much zakah does he pay? They're not naturally going out in the pastures uh, of the free grazing uh, land as they should be, right? If they are free grazing livestock, then zakah is upon them, sa'ima. If they're not sa'ima, free grazing, there's no zakah upon them, right? Uh, a Muslim has a farm that produces a thousand kilograms of watermelons, watermelons, okay? A year. He produces a thousand kilograms of watermelons. What's the zakah upon this? Ascent. It's not zakatable because it's not a measured, it's not sold by measurement, right? It's sold by weight, nor is it storable, okay? So for it to be zakatable, the food produced, it has to be measurable, okay? It has to be a mikyal of it, and it has to be storable, okay? Iddikhar of it. Tayyib. A person extracts from the earth 100 grams of gold, and the time for his zakat is tomorrow. Does he have to pay zakah on this gold? Exactly. So we said metals which are extracted from the earth, okay, these valuable metals, as soon as it's taken out of the earth, you have to give zakah upon it. There's no hawl upon um, 
produce, nor is there hole upon that which you extract from the earth. A person has a shop with, and he trades with goods worth around 495 grams of silver. Okay, Fahad? 495 grams of silver. And he has fixed assets worth 500 grams of silver. What's his zakah paid on? So there's no zakah upon the fixed assets, correctly, as the brother said. But even on the trained goods, there's no zakah because it didn't reach above the nisab, right? I said 495. If it was 595, then there would be zakah upon the nisab, right? But the point from the question is that zakah is not on the fixed assets of the shop or the factory, etc. When is it a must to pay zakah al fitr? Before the Eid prayer, before people go out to pray Eid. What measurement is paid in zakat al-fitr? What is the amount? It's uh, a sa'a, and a sa'a is arba to amdad. A sa'a is four of these, this times four. Okay, eight handfuls of food, of the staple food of the country. Name two f food items that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned for zakat al-fitr. And dates, okay, tamar, bur and tamar. Okay, you can add to that uh, raisins and uh, sha'ir and all the flour of these things, the barley and the wheat, the flour of them, or we said anything else which is a common food item of that particular land. طيب. If a person is in his country and his wealth is somewhere else, where is the zakah to be paid? A person is in this country and his zakah is, his, his money is in, for example, America, where is the zakah to be paid? In this country or in America? In his own country, right? Because al-zakal, zakatul mal, muta'alliqatun bil mal. Okay, the zakat of the wealth is connected to the wealth. Okay, what about zakat al-fitr? The same situation. Where you are. Okay, muta'alliqatun bil badan. It's connected to the body of the person. You are asked a question because now you're a mufti, alhamdulillah. And the person says to you, can I send my zakat to... Dukhan. Can I give my zakat to Dukhan? Good, very good. You have to pay it in your locality. But we said the limit is the distance of which, whereby if you go beyond that distance, you can shorten your prayers, right? So around 80 kilometers. Very good, Ahsant. Tayyip, next question. A person doesn't have wealth, nor can he earn wealth. What is the term given to him by the Sharia? Ahsant, Faqir. A person has wealth, but it doesn't suffice his needs. It suffices only 60% of his needs. What is the term given by the Sharia? Ahsant, very good. Miskin, good. A masjid asks for zakah. Can they be given zakah? Yes, no, why? It's not one of the eight categories, right? We said fi sabilillah is very specific, okay? But there was an exception that the humbly scholars, some of them, like Imam Ahmed mentioned. What was that exception? So the majority of the ulama, they say you stay within these eight categories in Surah Tawbah, which is the Maliki, the Shafi, and the Hanbali. Okay, but the Hanbalis made an exception. They added something else to Fi Sabilillah, which was Hajj. They said, Hajj, Fi Sabilillah, okay? Taib. A person has a debt and he finds it very difficult to pay off that debt. Can he receive zakah? Yes, as long as the debt is not from that which is haram or for reasons of being haram. A rich man wants to give zakah to his wife because she cooks him very nice biryani. Because his responsibility to provide for her, therefore he cannot give her zakah. A poor Muslim collects zakah for the state. A poor Muslim collects zakah for the state. What's he to be given from zakah? Very good, Ahsan. So he's given two times, one for being poor and one for the amount that he's owed for the work that he did for the state in terms of collecting and distributing. A non-Muslim is given zakah. A non-Muslim is given zakah. What could be the two possible reasons for that? Exactly. So they are from the mu'allafati qulubihim. Okay? A Muslim wants to give zakah in advance for three years. Yes, no, why? We said two years is the maximum, right? Two years with the intention of giving an advance. A Muslim delays giving zakah, Muhammad, and when he decides to finally pay the zakah, just before he does that, his wealth diminishes completely. What's the ruling upon this person? He's still legible, it's still incumbent upon him to pay zakah because he had tafrit, he had laziness, carelessness, so he's not excused from that. Land produce is watered naturally. Natural produce 
is watered by the rains, etc. What is the rate of zakah on this? 10%, exactly, 10%, yes, 10%. Land produce is watered by human intervention. What is the rate? 5%, very good. Uh, which should be used for determining the nisab? Is it the gold or the silver or both? It has a lower value, therefore it's anfa. It's better for the poor, meaning that more people will be able to pay that zakah. Okay, very good. A man has a gold ring, okay? A man has a gold ring encrusted with diamonds, okay? In the shape of a bull horn, and it's worth 9,000 riyals. That we say the reason he pays the cow on it because it's haram. It's haram usage, right? The man is not supposed to have gold. Very good. A woman has an amount of gold and she only wears it once in the year. It's above the value of nisab. It's personal belonging. Anybody want to add to that? Exactly. She, ha she has to wear, this is what I was actually trying to intend to. Yeah, very good. She has to wear it at least once in the year. Okay, otherwise it becomes, like David said, treasure. Therefore, she would have to pay zakah upon it. But as, as long as she wears it at least once, then there's no zakah upon it. Tayyib, wa sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Very good. You made me happy. Jazakumullah khair. 32 questions answered without much of a problem. We ask Allah Azawajal to make it heavy in our scale of good deeds. Ameen. Next week, by the permission of Allah Azawajal, we will start uh, the chapter on preparation for Ramadan, the fiqh of Psalm and matters pertaining to that. So please attend and bring people along who can benefit. Any questions you guys have on Zakah?